what, what, what we're trying to do with our ESG ratings is essentially to quantify what is typically considered to be qualitative. So we take the, the factors that are not quantified in the financial statement that are typically not part of a fundamental analysis and we turn them into fundamentals. So we regard ESG as just a set of additional factors that can also be quantified. They can be scored, they can be rated, and it's our job to do so. That's our entire approach. We also have a second set of ratings which are focused on accounting, which actually do exactly the opposite. In accounting, you're dealing with quantitative factors, but we try to judge the quality of those numbers. So rather than look to see whether they simply add up, we look to see whether they tell a story about the possibility of fraud or manipulation in the numbers themselves. So we're evaluating the quality of the numbers. So again, we're trying to quantify the qualitative in our ESG rating and then to qualify the quantitative with our AGR rating. There is so much information about ESG and SRIs and, and it is not always communicated in a, in a good way. How can we improve that? In, in, in order to do this, in, in order to quantify qualitative information, um, first of all, you have to have a, a strong model. Um, it has to be something that you've tested um, historically. You, you have to have applied it to, to see if it works consistently. Um, it has to be something that can be scaled so that you can apply it to a number of companies across different sectors and across different uh, geographical or geopolitical regions, I should say. Um, and, and that's what we've made an effort to do. And so there, there are parts of the model where the complexity of the model is there specifically to deal with the complexity of the data. Uh, we divide it into specific categories. ESG is, a, is a, a helpful way of setting the high level components, environmental, social, and governance. And then we have subcomponents within governance, board, pay, ownership, and control. Um, and those classifications allow us to assign subcategory ratings um, to score at that level. So it makes the, the whole system, the whole model, much more informative to the investor who's using it. So again, we're providing a quantitative analysis of all of these various complex pieces. We make adjustments for sector differences, for regional differences, and all of that is part of the model. We also adjust for the presence of a controlling shareholder. We don't rate a company that's widely held the same way that we would a company with a controlling shareholder. It makes the model significantly more rigorous and significantly more effective in terms of addressing the, the sheer complexity of all of that qualitative data that underlies the model. Do you think regulation is a good way to boost ESG? Um, a certain amount of regulation is critical. Um, compliance with the law is one of the ways in which we judge many aspects of social impact in particular. And if we didn't have those legal or regulatory standards, um, then we wouldn't be able to judge them accordingly. So that, that level is critical. There comes a point where um, a certain minimum level of disclosure is essential and not all companies will voluntarily uh, adhere to that. So regulation around disclosure to a degree is important. On the other hand, when um, regulation around disclosure gets to the point where um, the disclosure is reduced to boilerplate language uh, and it's not particularly informative, then that's not particularly helpful. And in terms of detailed re regulation that tries to specify structural characteristics of the governance of a company and so on, uh, we don't generally find that to be uh, nearly as helpful as when a company voluntarily complies with the uh, requests and wishes and, and needs of shareholders. So we'd re really rather see these things market driven as much as possible. Um, the, the, the example of the social impact concerns uh, aside.